In this video, we're going to talk about how to grow sunflowers for selling at your market, along with tips and tricks that you need to know for growing sunflowers, and what are my five favorite varieties to grow for my local market. Hey y'all, my name is Jessie and I own Living on a Prayer Flower Farm, located in Russell, Louisiana, Zone 8B. I sell my locally grown flowers at the farmer's market and have been on this journey for three years now, with a full-time job, farm, and family to take care of. It's a balancing act, but I am passionate about sharing my flower farm journey with the knowledge, the experience, the good, the bad, the ugly, the coffee with you. So I've been growing sunflowers for a little over three years now, and they are my favorite and easiest flower to grow. And they're the most profitable flower that I grow here on the farm. I've only really messed up sunflowers once in the three years I've been growing them. Okay, maybe twice in the three years I've been growing them, but it's a learning experience. I'm gonna share with you everything that I've learned from those mistakes. In today's video, we are gonna start with the basics on how to grow sunflowers, go over tips and tricks that you need to know to make them sellable at your market. And I'll tell you about my favorite varieties that I grow from my market. So sunflowers can be transplanted or directly sown into the ground. I personally prefer to directly sow my sunflowers into the ground versus transplant. It really depends on how many you're growing. If you're growing a few sunflowers and you have a huge deer or a chipmunk, a pest problem that will eat your sunflowers, then transplanting may be the best way to go. But if you're planting hundreds or thousands like I do, then the way to go is direct sowing them. For the past two years, I have direct sown by hand and it is a chore, but now I have a jank cedar that does it for me and it makes life so much easier. If you are going to transplant, keep in mind that sunflowers have what we call a tap root. It's this long root that comes down and if you destroy the tap root or if it breaks off during transplant, you could potentially kill your sunflower that you just transplanted. So be aware of that. Also with transplanting, you need to be able to have that space prepared because they're gonna be ready for transplant within two weeks or less. And you're gonna be able to harden off those sunflowers before putting them out. Basically, transplanting sunflowers is a pain. Direct sow if you can. When direct sowing your sunflowers, you're gonna to wanna to bury them about a half inch deep and you're gonna to wanna to space them four to six inches apart. You can go closer if you want to. With sunflowers, your flower size and stem size will be based on how close together your seeds are. So the closer the seeds, the smaller the flower head and the thinner the stem. The further apart you plant them, the bigger the flower and the bigger the stem. I normally go with four inches to three inches on my sunflowers to give me usable bouquet heads that I can mix in with other flowers like zinnias. But if I want to sell just a bundle of sunflowers together, then I'll space them out about six inches apart to give me those big, beautiful heads of sunflowers. When direct sowing, if you have a bird issue, it's a good idea to have some bird netting or something to cover up where you planted those seeds for the first week or two until all the seeds have germinated. I cannot tell you how many times I've had crows. I have a crow issue that come and eat all the seeds. So every year when I plant seeds, I put out a row of bird netting. I use soda crates or some metal hoops to keep the netting up off of the sunflowers as they germinate. You don't want them to start growing through the net. Trust me, done that, been there, pain. Once the seeds are planted, I like to go ahead and water them in and then I will water them every morning until they have germinate and then I'll water them about once a week, if at all. I use drip tape in my sunflower rows to water my sunflowers during the summer. After that, all that's left to do is wait for them to grow and get to the correct height and time for harvest. Now, before we get to how to harvest your sunflowers and when's the proper time to harvest, let's talk about some issues that you can have with growing sunflowers. My worst enemy I run into here is the dreaded leaf hopper. I hate leaf hoppers. Leaf hoppers are the worst. They spread disease. One way to battle the leaf hoppers is you can either use some pesticide specifically designed for leaf hoppers. Neem oil, in my experience, does not touch them. An insecticide that uses like Dawn dish soap and vinegar 
is a great solution that does work it's natural but my favorite solution to dealing with leaf hoppers and other bad bugs is by bringing in good bugs things like ladybugs and green laced winged insects the green laced winged insects are my number one go-to I will plant out a few eggs and larvae in the garden during the spring and they help me control the bad bug problem I will still have leaf hoppers but not nearly as many as I would have had if I didn't do anything. The reason I don't like to go with the pesticide or the Dawn dish soap and vinegar is just because one, my pollinators, I wanna make sure that I keep my pollinators and my good bugs in the garden. The pesticides work on both. And then there's also a time issue. Working a full-time job, caring for my family and trying to care for the flower farm. I really don't feel like going out in the farm at 10 o'clock at night because you have to do it after dark so that all the pollinators are you know asleep and spraying so my solution is bugs bring in the good bugs another issue you can run into is powdery mildew here in zone 8b we are very humid very hot and wet it is gross so we have an issue with powdery mildew it's not too big of a deal with sunflowers because you're going to harvest them before it really becomes an issue but one way that you can combat that is by just stripping some of the lower leaves on the plants as they mature and helping that airflow going through it's all about airflow the more airflow you have for these plants the better your chances of fighting off something like powdery mildew all right so for harvesting sunflowers you're going to want to harvest them before they're wide open if they're wide open it's a little late you can still harvest them if they were like just now like bam open but it's best to harvest them when you can see the yellow petals in the center and they're starting to curl out they're starting to unfurl that's the best time to harvest your sunflowers you're gonna cut them as low as you want strip off all the leaves and place them directly into water i prefer to harvest my sunflowers either in late evening or very early in the morning you really don't want to harvest them in the heat of the day it's really hard on the flowers if you do that once you get the sunflowers inside you're going to place them in a bucket of clean water with some flower food preservative mixed in it sunflowers are what we call dirty flowers which means they dirty up the water very quickly and can spread bacteria by shedding the leaves that fall below the water line first that helps but what I've learned and one of my mistakes I've made is not putting them in a flower food preservative. If you're holding these sunflowers for a few days, then you're really going to run into this issue, which is bent neck syndrome. And bent neck syndrome is a heartbreaking. Basically, the bacteria has grown. They've dirtied up the water so much that their stem clogs up and they can't get that water up to the bloom up top. So it just kind of flops over. By using a flower food preservative in the water, it's gonna help keep the water clean, the bacteria level low. As long as you change that out every two or three days, your sunflowers are gonna look great when it's time to sell them. You can place your sunflowers in a dark, cool room, or if you have a spare refrigerator, you can place it in the refrigerator. Just make sure it's not too cold. About 56 degrees is the ideal temperature for sunflowers, and you can hold them for a few days in there. I wouldn't hold them longer than a week. That's a little too long in my opinion. And then you risk losing base life or bent net syndrome anyway for your customers. Let's talk about some things that you may not have thought of when growing sunflowers. So pollinus varieties. A lot of sunflowers come with pollen and when they bloom open on your customer's table and pollen just falls all over and turns it bright yellow, they will not be happy with you. Pollenous sunflowers are still good for the environment. The bees can still make nectar out of it. Though pollen sunflowers are best for the pollinators. So if you're wanting to feed the bees, go ahead and plant a few of those in a different area for them. But for your customers and selling at market, make sure you're buying pollenous varieties of sunflowers. Keep in mind you need to succession plant. A lot of these sunflowers, depending on the varieties you plant, are going to bloom at the same time. If you plant Procut Horizon or Procut Brilliance, those bloom between 55 to 65 days and sunflowers are cut and done. So once you cut them, they're gone. You can buy branching varieties and you'll get a couple of days more out of those. But overall bloom time 
isn't necessarily like a zinnia where you can cut and come again. So it's a good idea to succession plant. Plant them every couple of weeks so that you have a continuous thing of sunflowers. Personally, what I like to do is buy seeds that bloom at different times. So I buy some that will bloom at 50 to 60 days, and then I buy some that go from 80 to 90 days, and I've got them all the way up to 130 days, and I plant those all at once, so that it's just a continuous bloom of different varieties. All right, now, what sunflowers would I recommend you grow for your flower farm? What are my favorite varieties? These are in no particular order, really, but Pro Cut Brilliance is one of my favorite varieties due to its uniformity. It looks like something you would get from a floor shop. It's just so uniform. They all bloom around the same time. They all look about the same. I love Pro Cut Brilliance. They're very dependable, good germination rate, love them. Sunrich Summer Providence, or just Sunrich Series. One thing I love about the Sunrich Series is that they bloom with upright facing heads. So a lot of sunflowers you'll notice will either be just like straight facing you or facing down a little bit. And it's frustrating when you need it to look up. You're like, look up sunflower. But they tend to naturally go down. The Sunrich series has upward facing heads, which is desirable to florist and desirable to you to work with. So that's why I love that one particularly. Double Quick Orange is one of my personal favorites that I love. It sells well at my market. More people at my market tend to go for the normal looking sunflowers, but there's a few like me who just love the uniqueness of a double petaled sunflower. Double Quick Orange has a beautiful green center with all these petals coming around it. It's just so unique and I love it. It's unique and not commonly seen. Pro Cut Horizon is another one I love. It tends to be upward facing, nice and uniform, and it has a nice dark brown center. It's just a good traditional sunflower to offer my customers. I'm gonna mispronounce this one, but Starburst Panache is another one of my favorite that I'm growing this year. It's a double, but instead of a green center, it has a brown center. And it goes, it has a unique color scheme. So it kind of goes from a dark orange in the middle and then lightens up to a lighter yellow on the outer petals and it's just gorgeous. So if you haven't already, start growing sunflowers, start succession planting, and offering them at your local market. You won't regret it. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, be sure to smash the like button, and if you'd like to follow along on my journey, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to see me plant thousands of sunflowers with my new jank cedar while fighting crows and saving snakes, click this video here, and I'll see you there. Bye.